All right, I got my stringers put on. And uh, as you can see, started back here on some fabric. Uh, what I ended up doing on the stringers was uh, took good old Fateful right here. This old torch, probably that's older than I am, and I'm 40, so she's ancient. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, what I done is I took the torch and uh, all those brackets that were on the formers or brazed on and the uh, old v-channel steel stringers were brazed to those little crimp type brackets so what i done is i knocked them off with a torch and then grinded you know took my little grinder and cleaned up the edge of the formers and all and i was gonna braze some more crimps on to put these aluminum univair stringers on and uh plane's kind of cockeyed where i just got through gluing that seam up through there i got a uh basically an envelope without the bottom in it but it's only one seam on the spine stringer but uh anyway so what i done is i took not you know cleaned those up and made some new brackets as you can see right here what i done is took uh I don't even think I have any of it over here. No, it's round back over behind the paint booth over in the corner. But what it is, is uh, it's just little thin strips of steel. Real strong, sturdy, hard to bend, kind of, well, pretty tough to bend stuff. And uh, riveted to the formers. And then I turned them up, drilled them out, and put a little sheet metal screw there in them. Cause this channel, as you can see here, how it's made, is it's kind of arched on top. And I mean, this stuff is so strong. I don't I mean, I don't think it's gonna bow at all like the metal ones there did, you know. So it ought to be good. But what I done is I heated them up with the torch right here, or not the torch, but uh, this little mount gas. And took some pliers and just held them here on the end and just kind of put pressure on them, pushing them in. And this one here, it started kind of cracking a little bit here on the top so i stopped on that one but the other one right here did great but that ain't a big deal there i smoothed that up good and everything so we ain't no chance of it hurting the fabric so we're good on that same thing right here i've already got some tape over them but the bracket stops right here because you can see right here that's where the, the original 5 16th view channel came up to well it came on up a good quarter inch and then it kind of bent over the stringer that was on there so i just took and squared them off made these little brackets and brought them up and bent them over and uh put a screw in the back side of those and i mean this you know put three rivets or two rivets two or three i think two two rivets into that uh they're just regular uh stainless steel pop rivets and then i took and mixed up some epoxy primer and ep420 and you know painted them all up and all but i painted the brackets before i ever cut them uh, they were in strips uh 5 16 wide strips so got those on those turned out real beautiful and then up here where the new stringer meets the original u channel is the stringer I took some pliers and just kind of widened out the sides on this channel and slid the stringer you know up inside here two inches and then I took pliers and I rolled the edge of this U channel I rolled it up underneath that little mushroom top on the stringer so it locked it in so it ain't no way in the world it's gonna go down you know or sideways so i mean it's there to stay and then just put uh you know tape here over uh but the fabric i ordered an envelope from univair without the bottom in it and i sent them a picture of the airframe and i draw the red line right down the spine of the airframe right here and up the vertical on top of the vertical and i told them i said this is how i need it stitched i said just take two pieces of fabric, roll it out on your table, take your pattern, 
that's the shape of the airframe that has the vertical on it and mark it off and you know cut the fabric just on the top but leave it long on the bottom and stitch it up you know and do a uh, a french uh french fill seam on it and i get the package i ordered that the week before my granddaddy passed away and whenever i got it uh i didn't open it up you know anyways i said it'd take seven to 14 days for me to get get the fabric and it ended up taking six weeks to get it and uh so when i did get it it was a few days before i opened it and when i opened it up they didn't even do the first the only stitching they did on it was right on top of the vertical fin they had the two side pieces the long two side pieces stapled together and i was like what the heck is this so anyways i ended up having to drive all the way down to aircraft spruce yesterday morning to uh you know basically go back there and draw it all out on how it needed to be cut and uh stitched up so uh and she still didn't stitch a, a french seam in it this is just a regular standard you know one stitch seam in it so i just you know I said to heck with it. I'm tired of fooling with it and I'm ready to get it put on and get it done. And so what I've done, uh, and right here, because her pattern was made different, I just told her to just leave it open in this little area from here to about here. And, uh, and then I'll wrap it around and fit, you know, fill it, you know, blend it all in, but the vertical is not fitting right. So, I'm gonna have to cut the seam out and then just wrap it around and overlap it, you know, from right here up all the way up, all the way up on the top too. So anyway, I'm just, I can make it work and I'm, you know, ready to get it done or, you know, ready to get, move forward here on it, I say. Uh, I'm still a long ways from being done, but uh, you know what I mean. So anyway, but what I've done is I just took the flap you know, that was a good, you know, half inch or so flap that she left on, you know, the tail there when she stitched it. And I just put that tail on this left side of the airplane and, you know, clipped it on with these clips. And then I took off, you know, about 12 inches worth of clips. And then I pulled it up and I glued under it and then I pulled it back down and rubbed the glue in good. I just used straight glue, not thinning it with nothing uh, for the first application of putting it on. And then I went back with some glue thinned down one to one uh, with MEK uh, and brushed it through on the outside and let it soak in good. And then I rubbed it all in with my thumb, you know, or whatever to get it to, you know, soak in good. And then I put the clips back on and you know let it dry so i just finished this up 30 minutes ago i start you know i started at the tail and worked my way to the top and uh so probably tomorrow i'm gonna i'm gonna probably just leave it like it is for right now let it dry real good overnight uh and then throw my blanket you know the other side back over here and uh get that <clears throat> excuse me my mouth's getting dry get that done but uh as you can see we're slowly getting there you know it sorry it took me so long there to get another video here updated on the cub but whenever i lost granddaddy i kind of threw a wrench there in my spokes and it's still hard to be out here in the shop without him you know i'm used to him sitting right over there in his chair and uh my aunt made me a picture for my birthday on may the 4th and it's on a little canvas thing and so I hung it up right up above his chair right here. So, you know, he's he's in heaven looking down on me, you know, but uh, but anyways. But we're slowly getting there, and I appreciate all my subscribers and everybody following me here on this project. And uh, just, you know, I got the bottom put on. That was the thing there when I ordered the envelope. I said I want an envelope without the bottom, you know, with that one seam down it. And, you know, so when I get it and I open it up, uh, you know, it's had three tags on it, like these right here. It had uh, top, bottom, 
in sides and the two sides were stapled together and I'm like, how in the what the crap is this, man? So how they stitch their envelopes is they stitch them with three seam or uh, there's four seams in it. There's a seam on each going down each lingerie on, on the bottom. And then they have a seam coming down each stringer, outside stringer, like these aluminum stringers here. And I've yet to figure out, I don't know, maybe somebody can throw me a picture somehow, but I'd just like to know how they make that transition with the top and their side pieces right here at the fillet here where it turns up. I don't know. But anyways, uh, but the bottom zone, it's done. I've just got it tightened to 225 right now, and I'm waiting until I get the side zone. And then I'm going to, you know, tighten the sides at 225 and then go back at 250 on everything and stop at 250. So I'm going to pull the fabric tight as I glue it. So hopefully it won't take so much to tighten it. So anyways, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I appreciate you watching the video. And we'll see you on the next video. Well, I'm going to try to try to make a update videos, you know, once a week. Uh, you know, about every Friday or Saturday from here on out. And so hopefully we can, you know, get, get the ball here rolling. So anyways, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.